So, hello everybody, warm welcome to the theme park press conference to see the preview of Heimtech Steel 2016. I'm very happy, I'm very glad to be here. As you can see, it's not the kind of a normal location like we are normally at Messe Frankfurt, no. Today, we are here in Frankfurt, in the heart of Frankfurt, at the 25 hours hotel, the Goldman. And the reason why we are here is because we have a kind of long-term collaboration and relationship with 25 hours. We're very happy that 25 hours is our partner. And I have here with me Niels Janssen. He's the general manager from 25 hours. He will do a short introduction about the 25 hours concept. Later on, we will have the presentation about the theme park preview. Um, Olaf Schmidt, the vice president of Messe Frankfurt, will do the introduction of the trend table members. And as usual, if you have been with our previews, with our live streamings in the past, um, you are able to um, send us questions during the presentation whenever you want and I'm happy to um, forward these questions to the trend table members to the audience later on after the presentation after we have finished our talks and everything but now I'm really happy Niels that you are yeah you are our host today yes. um, we are here in the newly relaunched um, living room and I'm really happy that you guys have uh, so uh, have used the, the green color because you know Heimtech seal is green. Yes. So this is this is a sign for our uh, very very close relationship. Thank you. Yes. So yeah, welcome to Twenty Five Hours Hotel, the Goldman. I'm really glad to be your host here in the green living room. And um, so yes, this is a kind of our concept to play with colors, textiles, because we are a small group of design hotels. And we locate in Berlin, Frankfurt, Hamburg, uh, Vienna, Zurich. And the next years we will open up in Munich, uh, Düsseldorf, and Cologne as well. So again, each of our hotels are totally different, tells us totally different stories. And we are looking for answers for um, yeah, new um, brand awareness uh, audience mm -hmm. who are looking for color stories. And especially the Goldman Hotel is a colorful hotel. Each room is in a different colors, each floor in different colors. So um, we were inspired by Frankfurt personalities mm -hmm. who tells us stories about Frankfurt so the guest can be start his experience in, in the hotel, not only in Frankfurt River or something like that, uh, direct in the hotel and place with all these stories. So this is the reason why we are close to the high tech here because mm -hmm. yeah, therefore we can be inspired by new trends and we're looking forward to take them in new products. And I heard when you have to check in, you can ask for your favorite color yes. to get a room in this color. This yes, is amazing. That's, that's right. So seven floors, totally different colors. So you can stay in a golden room with golden carpets. Here in this part, this is the east wing. We have 49 rooms, totally different. So you can yeah, have a room like a princess room, <laughs> like um, yeah, there's a room with a um, roulette table. We have rooms uh, with car interiors, so mm -hmm. everything is totally different. The other part, the west wing of our hotel, are inspired by the UN headquarters in New York. Mm -hmm. So therefore, textiles help us to transport the stories, mm -hmm. the feelings, the colors direct to the guests if they are checking in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're happy to see you as a visitor in 2016 and of, of course, course in our theme park. Of thank course. you very much, Niels. I thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and I'm happy to welcome you in 2016 and now um, yeah, we will start with the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very pleased, I confirm, to be here in the room with this green color. It looks like Heimtech Steel and this is a topic where we talk today. Uh, as mentioned by Timo Schwenzfeier, Heimtech Steel 2016 will be the second round of the new concept theme park. And uh, as last year, we have a very special format, a talk show format with the trend table members and uh, first of all I would like to introduce all the members who are with us today. First I start on the right side with uh, Felix Diener, Felix Diener uh, from the studio Felix Diener. Of course then w WGSN, uh, first I would like to introduce uh, Lisa Duet and uh, Helen Seck. We are very pleased that you are here with us today. And on the left side, Anna-Marie Commandeur from Steel Institute Amsterdam. And uh, I'm pleased to welcome Mayuri Seng Chang from Exalis for Kala International. And uh, the trend table is a little bigger, uh, so we miss some members today. I would like to mention Lisa White also from WGSN and uh, Dan and Jen Namura from Den Projects. 
And uh, I would not, not like to miss to mention Carolyn Till and Kate Franklin von Franklin Till. Yeah, for the, for, uh, for the next edition of Heimtech Steel and the next edition of Theme Park, uh, Lisa Duet and Helen Seck from WGSN are responsible in organizing the Theme Park and also the Trend Show. And uh, open speaking, I think we can say uh, that um, yeah, the Theme Park is a must-see at Heimtech Steel. I mentioned the second edition will be in 2016 and when we look back to the last edition of the theme park, the people who are here in Frankfurt had the possibility to see something about the new trends, the trends uh, of uh, design, of colors, of materials, and uh, of course textiles, because it's a home textile show. And uh, we would like to focus also on some different topics which are interesting for the industry, like retail, hospitality, sustainability, and technology. And the following edition of Heimtech C 2016 will focus with the theme park on very new topic and a very mega trend is Industry 4.0. And of course, we are a textile show related uh, to all textiles and mainly to home textiles. So the presentation uh, of the content will be later um, and I think we get a lot of insights about new, this new mega trend. Um, when you was at Heimtech Steel uh, in 2015, you remember the trend was in Hall 4.0. Um, we decided to have a change for 2016. The reason is very easy because we have a high uh, request from companies to be with us mainly in the furnishing and decoration area in 4.0. So we have for the following edition a fully booked hall. Uh, you find this product group and of course digital printing. And this is the reason, one of the reasons also to change with the theme park in a new hall. This will be 6.0 and also of course in the heart of the fair. And now I would like uh, to forward to Lisa and Helen to the presentation uh, of uh, the new concept, the concept of the concept and also the background. And uh, we are very happy to have you here and listen now to you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very thank much, you. Mr. Schmidt. Um, so firstly, just want to, on behalf of WGSN, thank Heimtech staff for having us on board on this amazing journey. It's really an extremely exciting project for us and we're more than thrilled to be a part of it and to be you know, welcomed into the Heimtech staff family, as it seems. So um, this year, earlier in February, we came together with um, a greater group, the group which you see here and a few others that aren't with us. And we all sat down together and looked at you know talked about the season coming and the season in the future and we really sat down and really thought about talked about talked argued you know went through the, the whole process of coming to um, something that we all really believed in that was really important for this season and what we really came to the common thread that kept rising was this idea of well-being but it wasn't the idea of well-being as we're used to seeing it in the past. It's the idea of well-being in the future. And that's, therefore, we have the title Wellbeing 4.0. So it's a prospective vision. It's the future vision of the direction that we're seeing well-being um, playing out in the industry, in this sort of industry that we're looking at today. So with um, the idea of mindfulness and well-being being, being such a big um, topic of conversation over the last year and leading up into the future years, it's definitely a topic that um, is on the tip of everyone's lips, something everyone's looking into. But we're looking at it this season from a, a new point of view, bringing a new different angle and element to that. So into the presentation, we'll go over to the next slide. Yeah, so here the idea is in that presentation we will first introduce uh, this concept of well-being 4.0. What do we mean by uh, well-being 4.0? What is our message? What is our objectives also for home textiles visitors? So, and then we will also introduce the four trends uh, that uh, really um, are straight from this concept of well-being 4.0. Um, then we will, uh, of course, present you the global concept of the stage design, the scenography, um, with uh, mood boards inspiration, textile journey, market sectors. And we will finish the presentation with the video, the trends video. So we start with you know this idea of well-being as I mentioned before and now we're talking about what does well-being mean today and what will well-being mean tomorrow. 
So today the vision of well-being really is um, focused on mindfulness. I think we all have a vision of well-being today and it's your your woman in yoga pants sitting with her legs crossed on the couch, maybe in the living room, maybe on the beach. But really this season we need to explore all the different aspects and combinations of well-being. Um, and for us, well-being isn't a single-minded uh, vision of well-being. Here we're looking at um, combining the four different trends, which we'll begin to introduce you later, that really come together to achieve this new perfect balance. Yeah, and you will also see that we are going to talk a, a lot about the circle of wellness. Um, you will see that in the stage design, this shape of roundness, this circle will come back a lot and we will explain what does that mean also. So here, the idea is, is saying that we really want to focus on the human element. We want to value the human hand versus the machine. We want to bring, bring back the human element to the center of the attention. Here, I guess that we really want to say that today we are surrounded by new technologies. Um, we are in some way, we, have, we are losing the human touch. So we really want to value this human hand, this human talent versus uh, the machines, exactly. So it's a great season where we're going to celebrate the beauty of old craft, celebrate craftsmanship, but also we're not forgetting about industry and machine. We're looking to find a new balance where we have you know, human craft, human hand coming together with machinery um, and bringing in a new harmonious balance there. Yeah, and also we are all trying to achieve, I think, this balance between our professional lives, personal lives, physical lives, emotional lives. So maybe this perspective vision of well-being tomorrow is really to access to this holy grave, grail sorry, of, of having a perfect balance in mm -hmm. our lives. So we're just going to show you a very short preview of the video. We'll show the extended version at the end. So here's um, the short version, just as an introduction. So um, talking about the circle of wellness, if you capture and remember correctly, you'll see it now coming up on the screen, is this idea of the circle of wellness. And the concept of the circle here is really key um, to the message, to our message this season of well-being. Really, this circle really represents fluidity, circulation, flows of ideas, inspiration. It really uh, represents the infinite nature of energy as well as the symbolic uh, representation of birth and survival and death. Yeah, and what is important also to mention is that that circle really links all the trends all together. So it's really the bridge between our four trends, protect, energize, nourish and enrich. And so I talked earlier about all the different things that come together to build the new well-being. Here we're going to start to explore the four main, main trends that we're looking at for this season. Here we start to introduce them. Yeah, so the first trend is protect. This uh, trend is really about focusing on our inner space. We want to invite people uh, to make a pose, to take a break, um, to yeah, really um, focus on serenity, introspection. So it's about clear lines, it's about minimal lines, also really whiteness and purity. The second one we'll look at, which we'll go into more detail into in a minute, is energize. So it's not only about the Zen nature and the protection of the mind, it's somewhere where we can go to energize our souls and really energize our being. So this story here is really about energy, light, um, vibrant colors, dynamic shapes. We're looking at lots of technology coming through here as well. So lots of tech infused materials um, and the energy of being coming from um, luminotherapy and lots of technological advances that really come and influence in this trend. Furthermore, with Nourish, uh, we wanted to explore a more organic and sensible approach of well-being. It's really about uh, how we link vegetable, vegetal uh, plants with uh, the city and the urbanity. Mm 
And then finally, the last one we'll look at is called Enrich. So um, not only are we protecting our minds, energizing our beings, sort of nourishing ourselves and our bodies, we're looking at enriching our souls and enriching our minds at the same time. So here's really a trend where we're taking in a lot of um, visual stimulus, lots of opulence. Here we're going to see lots of really rich textural displays. We're seeing lots of pattern on pattern. Um, and here it really is a fusion of influences due to globalization as well. So it's this big um, mix from east to west coming together in this really rich um, trend called Enrich. So here we just go a bit deeper into each trend. So for Protect, we, as I said, we really invite um, the visitors to do introspection, to uh, be off. Um, we really focus on clear lines, edgy lines, uh, serenity, purity. Um, it's, it's about doing a retreat. Uh, it's about uh, really focus on your soul and on your being. Hmm. And we see this translate into materials and spaces by, you know, the fabric choices that we're, uh, we're making, the, the thickness, the warmth, the protection as well. So we're looking at this idea of armor or protection. And it also leads into the idea of protecting your mind from all the technology and all the information that's coming in as well. The next one we look at is um, Energize. So as I mentioned earlier, it's all about the sort of bright vibration, lots of um, color, and it's this sense of energy that you get from exercising. It's a sense of energy from well-being that really you know, makes you full of endorphins. And this story really is a visual explosion of that. It's the high energy colors. It's the um, luminescent surfaces. And as well, there's a tech techno side to this as well so technology is quite important in this trend yeah and it's more about a soft technology that can cure uh, the human uh, the human body the human life so it's really soft um, and it's about light luminotherapy is really important it's a concept that we really like for this trend mm -hmm. uh, with vibrant colors reflective surfaces um, and yeah all these trends around um, uh, dynamic shapes and dynamic colors vibrant tones uh, so for Nourish, we have a, an organic approach. Uh, uh, we really wanted to uh, explore sustainability with um, a modern and sophisticated approach. So it's really about how we today, how we link um, the nature with the city. Um, and um, I think in, in, in terms of materials, we are really close to uh, wooden surfaces. Uh, we will explore recycled materials, but with really innovative processes also. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not that we haven't seen a lot of natural recycled materials before in every season, because every season we, we talk about this, and it's, it's very important for the market that we're addressing here. But this season brings in a new breed of materials. They're more sophisticated, they're smarter in their design, they're more thought out, they're more, um, I guess, advanced, if you like. And they've developed and matured over time. And we see this trend in Nourish where we're looking at, you know, wood is wood but there's something about this wood that you know sets it apart that makes it a little bit more special than them in the seasons past and then finally in rich the trend in rich so you know looking at all the different areas of the the circle of wellness in rich is the one that really um reminds us about history and how important that is it reminds us of craft and technique and it reminds us of um our past and our roots so here we're really inspired by many things. I think it's hard to pinpoint one thing exactly that really drew this trend. This trend was all about uh, remembering the opulence and remembering the, I guess, you know, the good times and the celebration of um, beauty and of aesthetic, which is really important in this trend. So here we see lots of um, rich tapestries, we'll see lots of velvets come through for the season as well. And it's a celebration in culture as well, if you like. Yeah, and uh, also it's about valuing the old craftsmanship, but with new techniques. So we really link here the past with the future. We also link Western influences with Orient influences. Um, so it's a very decorative uh, uh, trend um, with a lot of energy and a lot of um, sophisticated lines. So now we are going to introduce you to the theme park uh, 2016 and 17 uh, that will be located in the hall 6.0. Um, so we will show you the whole concept uh, with the inspirations, um, the five sectors that correspond to a special concept also and the textile journey. 
So in harmony with the concept of the circle, we were talking about the circle of wellness uh, in the introduction, um, we wanted to have a physical evocation of what this circle means in the reality of our theme park. So what we will have in the theme park is in the middle, of, in the heart of the whole 6.0, you will have that large circular installation that will be approximately 150 square meters. Um, so it will be visible straight from the entrance mm -hmm. when you are actually going to step in the hall. Um, this will be enlightened with gradient color, so it will metaphorically uh, represent a sun that will radiate all around the hall. Mm -hmm. So it's really in line with the concept of well-being, circle, sun. We even say that it could be the heart, uh, if we talk about well-being in the human body, for example, it could be the heart, the driving force of mm -hmm. the whole 6.0. So this heart really is where the entire show will radiate from around. In a, um, so if you think of the heart as the centre, the sun as the centre, and everything else is gravitating around that. So. Um, you know, we're looking at the sun, the core, and then we have the um, five sectors, which we'll begin to introduce in a minute. And this is the driving force of this, this stage concept, is the sun and everything else radiating around it. So talking about um, the sun and the things radiating around it, we're going to talk a bit more about this cocoon concept, which we were talking about. And we were really inspired by the shape of the cocoon and the idea of the cocoon. And here, very much inspired by the idea of a nest. So um, very much in line with the idea of escape or openness at the same time. So it has really um, this double meaning. It has this sense of protection where you're inside and you're completely kept away from the world. But at the same time, it has this openness, um, which is you know open to the world, receptive to the world at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And as much as we were talking about the sun, uh, here the cocoons can symbolize the planets that mm. can gravitate around the sun. And as much as we were talking about the heart, we can talk about organs, maybe, if we are talking about a human being. Mm -hmm. So the sun doesn't work without the cocoons and doesn't work without the planets and the heart doesn't work without the organs. So everything is related to, um, everything has a relevance mm -hmm. between the circle and the cocoons. So looking at um, what these cocoon mean, cocoons mean and why we have them there, so um, they're really quite important to this show because they re represent the five market sectors that are really key to the Heim Textile show. We're looking at one single cocoon that represents hospitality, one for technology, one for craft, one for sustainability and one that talks around retail. And then on the sort of journey into the heart and the sun, as you walk into the trade show, this is sort of what you're going to begin to experience. This is what we call the textile journey. So here the, the objective is to really inspire the visitors with um, the fabrics that will be shown through. So as you walk through, you'll start to get a sense of the materials and the fabrics as you direct yourself into the sun. Yeah, and the idea is really to inspire the visitor as the minute when he's going to step in the hall, he will have some textile and this textile journey will lead him until the sun and the centre of the hall. Mm -hmm. And so the whole time what we're doing is drawing people into the centre of the trade show and to experience everything else that radiates around the ed edges of it. Yeah, and we, what we really are doing is like really providing wellness, well-being to the visitor. It's mm -hmm. going to be a heaven of wellness inside the hall 6.0. So we're looking at achieving this through light, through the feeling, through the displays and different things that are around us. So now we're going to look a bit more into how the five sectors are going to be represented here. So we'll start first with this um, hospitality cocoon. So here we're really looking at the idea of timeless refuge. Yeah, so here the idea is really to invite the visitors to really make a pause, take a break, explore different um, uh, sectors, explore, explore different uh, installations. So it's going to be all about whiteness, purity, uh, transparency, semi-transparency. The water also was really inspiring uh, for us. So it's about having a little nest, a, a little nest of peace mm -hmm. for the visitor, for this sector. And then the technology cocoon, we're looking at this idea of colour immersion and technotherapy being really important. So here expect to see lots of um, you know, colour and usage of light as well. So here we're, we're looking at using um, technology infused ideas but not overwhelming technology. So here is where we're going to sort of weave in the idea of technology and colour being very important. 
For the craft cocoon, we really want to focus on new craft techniques, um, craft map chips linked with innovative design processes. So it's going to be yeah, highlighting all the, uh, the value of the hand of the, the, the artist mm -hmm. uh, through different products, through different materials, innovative mm -hmm. materials. Um, and we're really looking at how, how to marry craft, like ancient craft, with technology, but in a really harmonious way, not in a sort of disjointed, uncomfortable way. In sustainability, we're looking at this idea of sophisticated sustainability. Yeah, so here it's about exploring, again, sustainability in a really sophisticated way. Um, so we are going to be very inspired by, um, you know, sophistication, vegetal wool. Uh, it's about showing new materials, recycled materials, but with really new innovative techniques. Um, and I guess if this season, it, it's not... Um, we don't want to repeat ourselves year after year because I think we talk about sustainability a lot. So this season we're really exploring it, looking at sustainability from a different angle. We're looking at sustainability in um, architecture, which is really important, looking at sustainability in building and future processes. So we're really inspired by how um, plant life inspires architectural design and what that means for the future of design as well. And for the retail cocoon, we will talk about uh, this concept of intimate retail because um, for us it's really important to, when we think about the store of the future, we can really say that um, it will be about feeling comfortable in a place. It can even be a home. Uh, we are inspired by uh, really concrete examples. For example, um, the line, the, the apartment by the line in New York is a really nice example of an intimate retail where people shop uh, while they are in an apartment. So here, the challenge is really to recreate this uh, intimacy mm -hmm. in this cocoon. Um, we are inspired by a uh, cabinet of wonders. Uh, so we really want to highlight some pieces, whether it is furniture, fabrics, mm -hmm. uh, design, chairs, something like yeah. that. We will really want to highlight this um, object as really piece of art. Yeah, and retail is a really interesting topic for all of us because the way people are shopping and consuming is really changing. We're seeing, um, I think many of us are used to going to a hotel where you're, the bed is shoppable or you could take the handbag and take that home with you as they have it here in the 25 hours hotel. So it's this idea of um, convenience as well, but also changing the dynamic of the way we consume, making it easier for us to consume, like in the example you mentioned in the intimate retail or whether it is by the hotels that you stay and you visit yeah, and it's the importance of the experience. It's um, shop to experiment and not experiment to shop. So mm -hmm. the, the, the importance of the experience here, it's really, really important. So then just an overview before we wrap up this um, section, um, just looking at how the whole pieces come together. We're looking at the well-being um, 4.0 being at the centre of the story, radiating that other five cocoons, the five sectors that we've just been through. And then leading into this as you enter the hall will be the textile journey, which leads you, you know, in a really sort of, we're hoping a very nice, calm, well-being kind of way into the centre of the sun where you can experience the cocoons and the different trends played out. And now we will end uh, that presentation with uh, our trend video. Um, so it's really about showing you how we developed the four trends and how those four trends are uh, all related to this idea of well-being 4.0. That is not one single vision of well-being. It's a combination of different aspects and trends. Mm -hmm. So we'll play the video. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Great, thank you very much. Amazing insights, honestly. Um, for the audience, you can see this video and some other videos and contents of the Theme Park Review at our website, <coughs> the website and the Theme Park website. Honestly, for me, um, especially the nourish uh, trend is amazing because it reminds me of walking in the woods in the, in the autumn, you know, when it's windy and rainy. So um, I hope to see something in a cocoon like this at times. <laughs> but we'll talk about this later. Um, you, have, you, have all, you were also responsible for the trend book, which is one of the hearts of our, of our trends. So is there something you can tell us about the concept or the, yeah, the editorial? What, what are you explaining there? Um, I mean, as an exhibitor of high Textile, you should already have received it or you will receive it. When you're a journalist, you're happily invited to, to um, get it as well. As a visitor, you have the chance to buy it online or on location. As I'm working for Mesa Frankfurt, I already have it, so I'm really happy to, to, to see all this stuff. But is there something special you can tell us um, about um, this trend book for this year? Yeah, absolutely. I think this, this trend book says a lot about how um, excited and how happy we were to work on this project. And receiving this back after you know, the amount of love and effort we poured into it, and having you know, this year separately in two different books, we've separated out the Can you show them both? So two different books? The, the trend book and the editorial book. Um, and the color palettes this season. So the editorial book for us um, the editorial book for us this season was really a great opportunity to tell the story behind well-being and tell, um, share the artists behind some of the amazing movements that we're capturing in well-being. So um, just going through the book itself, it's just full of like great insights, really um, special and unusual sometimes and interesting artists doing different things that are really going to impact the way we consume our fabrics and the way we design our spaces in the future. Yeah, and in the trend books, we really develop each of the four trends you just see. Um, so we have uh, color ranges, we have mood boards, and we also have a lot of storytelling about how and why we had developed all those four trends. Mm -hmm. So for us, that makes totally sense to link the editorial and the trend part. And just to as a conclusion, you will find kind of storytelling at the, at the theme park website, for example, but mm -hmm. to get the full story, of course, you would need the, the, trend, exactly. the trend book clearly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, Felix, you are, I would say you're quite new. I mean, it's the second time you're a member of the trend table, but now you're kind of experienced. Was it different to be part of the trend table for the second time or is it still kind of new? Is it kind of um, exciting to be part of? And of course, I would like to know and the audience as well, what did you bring in? Um, is there a special kind of a trend uh, you focused on or what are you focusing? What are you experiencing? Well, first of all, and uh, to be there the second time was as exciting as the first time. Um, but the nice thing was that, uh, in a way, it was also a little, um, not, not a repeat, but I, I could see that there is something continuous in, uh, in this trend table. And like I was saying also the last time, it is really nice that it's really a team of people that is working closely together and is coming out together um, with one idea. And I really like uh, this way of, of working. It's really great to work with all these people sitting here and also the, the missing ones. And then coming back to your question, what I brought in, I think I was able to bring in again a lot of textiles um, and a lot of textile knowledge and, uh, and what is going on in the textile industry and, and all around that. Which is very interesting and I heard about it like two or three weeks ago when talking about Industry 4.0 Honestly, when it's about our um, US American audience, they don't know Industry 4.0 quite well because they have, a, they have a, an own word. It's APM 2.0. Um, this is what I heard about. So um, was this something which was part of your discussion or were you really focusing on Industry 4.0? Um, I, I think a lot of it came from the idea that, you know, we're also, we all have this vision of well-being and in a sense it can be quite boring and there's not that much that can be, I guess, sexy about it if you like. And, and it all kind of came out of, you know, what's new? What's this season about? How can we make this exciting? Why is it exciting again? Why is it important? So I think we spent a lot of time talking about how to make this relevant for today as well, how to make this relevant for our visitors that are coming to Heim Textile. So um, really what we did was just pull out the key topics that everybody brought to the table and really highlighted the, the points that were the most relevant, the most new, the most exciting and 
in a way to really envelope the, that exact idea, we elevated the idea of home to, uh, well-being to 4.0. Mm -hmm. So here we're presenting the new version of 4.0, the new version of well-being, mm -hmm. if you like. Um, Anne-Marie, you are really famous not only for detecting trends in a textile area in general, but also for fashion trends. I would like to know, is it, is it different to find trends for interior design in terms of finding them for fashion design? Or are there some, some similar things you can, you can use or you can think about? Of course, there's a strong crossover, but especially in inspiration. Many fashion designers are very much inspired by industrial designers or interior designers, and vice versa. It's not that somebody would be inspired for specific textiles on the floor to wear it as a dress. It's not that close. But the overarching inspiration, the overarching uh, issues which are very important are happening both in fashion as they are happening in interior. So also when we talk about well-being, of course, and about the fact that luxury is changing, that people want, prefer to have time and personal attention rather than having materials or more, is happening in the retail for fashion as well as in retail for interiors, yeah. interior textiles. And would you say that the interior design is kind of following the fashion design or is it um, kind of an own no, I wouldn't Design say that. I must say, of course, I think uh, something happened, of, co of course, the past 10 years things changed. So there's an, a certain fastness, like fast food was happening, fast fashion, there's also fastness becoming in interior design. Um, on the other hand, I think there's still a totally different timing. Uh, the value of ideas and trends and new developments is uh, a very valuable one because it lasts longer. So I think anyhow, it's totally different products. Yeah. So uh, there is a crossover, there is an, a mutual inspiration. Um, but it is absolutely different markets. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Mayuri, um, is there is there kind of a for you personally? I mean, we're talking also about personally, not only about business related. So um, personally, is there kind of a number one trend in well-being? What you not only foresee in a professional way, but also in a private way, for example, what you like to use or what you are really, yeah, what you're really in. Yeah, actually, so normally I'm always dressed in black and today you may imagine so which trend is my favorite because actually I definitely believe, I believe of course in the four because we developed them all together with a specific target or for a specific so target group, um, but Energize is actually so that mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, it fits. <laughs> Definitely, because um, we know the challenge the industry has to face each year to bring something new on the market and to convince and to seduce the end users then to buy new collection, the big N, you know, mm -hmm. the big new. Mm -hmm. And for that, so then you can use, um, of course, so then colors. Uh, I like, really uh, love the ideas of uh, color storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a major uh, challenge as well so then for the industry to not only bring some new products, some new collection on the market, but to um, have a flow from season to season, mm -hmm. from year to year, to support and to accompany so then their, yeah, their user, their end user, and to bring them the real solution for their interior design. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore here, so in this trend, so energized they've got not only the colors to use the light we were talking about mm -hmm. LED uh, design is, which uh, has a major place in the new innovative the design at the moment but also so then everything which has to do with uh, innovation and technology uh, smart fabrics links with a new aesthetic through colors mm -hmm. so this is definitely my number one in this and case. during high year 2016 we will see you in a red dress as well ah, again let's see. <laughs> yeah, it, it must be a surprise as well so if not so then it's not so the of idea course. of XP you know so, yeah, yeah. so let's meet in January. With pleasure. Just another question for the audience. Um, Helen, when you talked about the sustainability part, I find it very interesting because I think you're right. Um, sustainability is, a, is kind of a buzzword in the past. Everybody is mentioning it, but um, we really need to, I think we need to, and we, for example, we as Heimtexty, we, we are having the Green Directory, which mm -hmm. is a guide which shows companies who are really producing sustainable and you can, they are listed and you can see them and you, we can visit them. Um, brings the theme park also an idea of how to um, focus on the industry process, how to bring sustainability in kind of every single process step, how is it possible? And do you, do you think it's able to make a forecast when this will happen like totally globally everywhere? Um. 
I think that the forecasting part of it is definitely quite a tricky part of it, but we have seen so many signs of designers embracing sustainability in fresh ways, and what this is doing is reinvigorating the idea of sustainability. I think, you know, talking about factories and slave labour, and I know industry people are probably, you know, growing really tired of hearing these things over and over again, and I think the more we hear things, the more we close our eyes and go, la, 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 you know, pretend that these things aren't happening. But, you know, for people deep-rooted in the industry, it's such an important topic. It's, it's you know, the world that we live in, the f our future generations, our children, our grandchildren will live in. So um, whether we like it or not, it's an important topic. So we see designers at the moment really embracing nature in design. And I think even such a simple thing like this will change the aspect of the way we approach sustainability and the way we look at sustainability. And through all these little steps and processes and the artists that we talk about in the book, these are the little things that are going to make people feel like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to look into sustainability because this is an angle that we've not explored before, but this is something I can grow passionate about and this is something that I can use to to make it a better world, if you like, you know, that kind uh -huh. of thing. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's definitely something, there's a movement towards it as to how fast or slow it moves is really hard to track, but it's, there's definitely something happening that uh -huh. we should be um, looking at. And um, Annemarie, do you think or do you recognize that, especially hotels, which we are kind of focusing with the well-being topic, that hotels are, are more and more interested in sustainably, sustainable textiles? Or is it still that they think about um, more the quality itself and all the contract related things? No, I think there's a lot happening in hospitality business and it's all interlinked. So on one hand, of course, they are trying to give different services. They have a more holistic approach. They think of the well-being of their customers, are very aware of the fact that they have to personalize their offerings and their services. Mm -hmm. So also in a way that is something which could lead to sustainable decisions because also these customers, they of course, they will like the fact that when they enter a room that they are there is an awareness about what uh, that people care for the the products they use in uh, in their rooms but also the the linen the textiles they even would be interested maybe in where it would come from uh -huh. when there is of course like a provenance a nice story <coughs> an interesting inspiration but also of course the way it is made and uh, uh -huh. it's a valuable material which is sustainable these are all storage which can inspire visitors of hotels and i think that the hospitality business is very aware of the fact that they have to do anything to really um, look good for their audiences, be good for their audiences yeah. in a very true way and not just a marketing yeah. way. Felix, have you ever asked the hotel uh, at the reception desk um, what, what no. parts of the carpet is our sustainability? Is this something you have in mind or you, maybe you will have it in mind in the, in the future? Um, I hope that we all have these things in mind in the future. Um, honestly, I have to say a little bit against um, what Anne-Marie said, that my experience in the industry is that um, sustainability is, is a lot of times still a little bit in the background. Okay. People are asking for it, uh, a lot of, of companies are playing with it as a, as a marketing tool, and then in the end, if you look closely at it, there, there is no, no real okay. substance. And probably this is also what is happening now, it's going deeper, 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 okay. it's getting more real. But for the moment, my very personal experience is that um, it's more about the price and the speed than about the deepness. Still, but... S still, um, yeah, but I think it's going to change. And uh, probably th there are more and more um, like that. I, I was speaking now more about the mass market. Yeah, maybe I talk about aspiration. <laughs> ah, yes, sure, okay. Because of course, that's also in fashion, that's the case. It's all about time and money but of course when you see and look at the most inspirational examples it's also the most influential companies at the moment who are really also very active in the hospitality business then these are the ones who are really uh, adding that touch yeah, to sure. their services yeah. and I also I must say it's not I think the visitors who ask for this and that's the same thing happening in fashion it's mostly not the consumers who ask for a sustainable sweater but when there is this story written all over the the product or the brand or the then it's something that triggers them and they are interested in, and they can be also made um, pay paying for it uh -huh. and that is of course also something which is very important so as long as it's focused on and it's communicated, it will be more and more important and that is very important. 
Ayri, you want to add something? Maybe so something to add. So then uh, it's regarding the new generation, the alpha generation. So then is uh, even more so conscious about this um, incredible issue of living green, so ultra green. So then, so for instance, so 80 percent of uh, the people aged between 15 and 25. So then, so look for um, where the product is coming from. Wants to know a story. So 80 percent is a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about yeah, Western it's countries. It's the upcoming generation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, living in Berlin, which is actually the seventh uh, greenest city in uh, Europe, 72% uh, of the uh, Berliners owns a bicycle, for <coughs> instance, more than in Amsterdam, <laughs> 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 pretty more, yeah. yeah. And um, so I've got a daughter as well, she's nine years old, and she really brings me mm -hmm. a new value and a new uh, sight regarding the how to live sustainable every day, so without talking only about ethics, so it's more like a new philosophy of life, mm -hmm. and therefore I definitely believe that the industry must follow the demand, so this is demand and offer, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so of course it's um, still an emerging trend, but uh, it's going to be faster, and if the industry doesn't give the proper answer to the demand, so then they will mistake, so definitely. And so do, you, do you think with uh, more experiences or more innovations in technology, it's um, we are able to f more fo to focus more on sustainability as well. So to link technology and uh, sustainability. Definitely, it could be a happy marriage, I would <laughs> say. So then, the technology meets nature. It was already a topic the last uh, years mm -hmm. uh, as well. So then, at Heim Textile, and um, innovation, high tech is improving a lot. So then, getting inspired by nature anyway. So therefore, yes, um, technology can enhance so then the value and the benefit of nature and the other way around. Mm -hmm. So. And this is what uh, we show as well so then in this uh, new concept, mm -hmm. uh, which is present in all the four trends that uh, you will see so then in January. Mm -hmm. yeah. Innovative fabrics, smart fabrics, but also uh, linked with a sustainable issue. Yeah. Um, Felix, I think your point was very interesting because you said that a lot of com or some companies are still um, focusing on the old process. You as a textile designer, you are a consultant for these companies. Are you able to um, show them a different way of processing of how to bring sustainability in? Is this something you, you want to, you want to focus on? Is this coming kind of automatically? What do you think? Um, it is coming slowly, automatically, be because the market is asking for it. For example, um, I'm working a lot in Turkey, and a couple of years ago, Ecotex 100 in home textile was not a topic. Today, it's a standard, but the standard is asked from the European editors. Mm -hmm. They are asking for it, and the market has to follow. And then, of course, you also have to uh, try to follow up with the production and everything. And on the other hand, you can also try to make your production ahead the market, to build this in before the market is asking and then you can say hey i'm already ready for for the next step so and yes yes it is important and yes you can you can bring it in but it's a it's a slowly slowly process mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time and energy and you said it's it's kind it's still kind of a marketing tool and maybe lisa you can answer this um for me I would say yes, if a hotel, a wellness hotel, which a lot of hospitality and I would like to have to spend a weekend there, and if they will tell me all textiles in the hotel is Ecotex 100 standard, for example, I would think I would feel better. So yes, it's kind of a marketing tool on one hand, but on the other hand, it's, yeah, it needs to be for real as well. Um, of course, I think um, it's a smart marketing tool now, but uh, on the other hand, people uh, are more and more informed and they don't want to be fooled um, by, you know, by, um, by brands or by hotels and they know what's behind. So um, I think, yes, it's a marketing tool, but it needs to, uh, we, need to we need to add meanings behind. Mm -hmm. And it's, if it's only marketing, then it doesn't work and people will know that. So it's the same thing in fashion. Uh, now more and more brands are using this sustainability uh, label, but um, people are asking for more traceability and more proof of this sustainability. So it's not only marketing. Of mm -hmm. course it is marketing, but it's not only marketing, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Olaf, how would you think or how would you see it um, in terms of a trade fair organizer? I mean, a uh, trade show like, or a trade fair organizer like Messe Frankfurt is giving a platform to the industry. But is the trade fair organizer also able to um, positioning the industry or positioning some relevant topics like sustainability or like progressive technology, for example? Yeah, yeah. I think um, 
as Fair Organizer, we would like to support this growing segment. And uh, we have in total 46 uh, textile fairs worldwide. Uh, we would like to support this industry. We would like to support it not as a marketing tool, no, also for the industry who would like to be connected to, uh, to buyers, to new buyers. And uh, we learned in the last, or we learned in the last year, that a lot of companies change their policy in sustainability and in their presentation. Uh, but nevertheless, I think only companies will be successful who have a wonderful product, and mm -hmm. the people buy it because it's a nice product. Sustainability is not enough. Also, especially in the fashion industry, we have two fashion shows in Berlin, and uh, we see exactly the people buy the products because it's fashion. And sustainability is a basis, it's important, but the people would like to have wonderful products and this is important and I think a good combination. But we as fair organizer, fair organizer we support this development, especially with different programs, with buying programs, with uh, some lectures like uh, Green Directory at Heim Textile, some special presentations, website and all this kind of marketing tools. Mm -hmm. The lectures are kind, kind of important. Um, is it already planned that we will have lectures again in theme park? Is something you can you can tell us now? Yes, definitely. So um, I won't um, go into too many details um, because it's not 100% validated for everyone. But of course, yeah, we will have some trend lectures. We will have some interesting speakers um, that will like really inspire all the visitors with um, different topics uh, related to the market sectors. So we will have uh, discussions about uh, technology, stuff technology, how technology is more and more involved in art, um, in fashion, etc. We'll have a lecture about sustainability also, about the new retail also. So we'll have some artists, we'll have some expert, retail experts. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. And I think we will also have kind of some guided tours like the last time, I guess, for special tours like for journalists or for interior designers. This is something we should, yeah, you know, we, we, have we can whole, expect. Yeah, um, we have itinerary sort of set up where we're um, developing ways where we can share our experience with our visitors. So uh, they're still under development. Maybe we'll keep it as a nice surprise for everybody. But um, definitely, um, you know, we want to be able to share our vision from our point of view as well, as well as letting a lot of people experience it in their own way. We really see this um, this season as, you know, we talked about this um, timeless refuge. So at the end of a long day, when you've spent your whole day at a trade show, it's somewhere you can come for that <laughs> complete, you know, that Zen experience, experience the trends in a different way, you know, give your mind a rest, your body arrest and that's you can come to this whole 6.0 to really experience that yeah and, and what's going to be very exciting is that we will have different aspects of the well-being 4.0 so um, you will be able to experiment the energy but also you will be able to experiment the meditation so lots of different aspects um, and installations and happenings that will and which is very interesting and also important is because next year you can already start the, this experience on a Tuesday because Heimtech Seal is from Tuesday to Friday and not longer from Wednesday to Saturday. So this is just something to keep in mind also to the audience um, that they can start to experience the theme park on a Tuesday, yeah. um, which, is, which is quite important. So um, to, to make a conclusion, to combine everything, is there, is there some key messages you can tell the visitors, also the exhibitors and the, the journalists, um, which they can expect when they visit the theme park in 2016? Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to you know the idea we spoke about, about this circle of wellness. And I think one of the key messages, as I mentioned, is it's no longer a single-minded vision of wellness. It's really you know capturing all the different essences of all the different trends and how they come together to really bring wholeness into you, um, wellness into one being. So it's about um, the enrichment, the knowledge, it's about the craft, it's about the protection of the mind from the technology, um, it's about the environment and nourishing and the food actually is really important this season as well. Um, and it's about bringing all these elements together to really create this new balance of well-being which is what we're really hoping to achieve this season. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you very much. So I would say um, lots of reasons to um, visit Heim Taxi 2016. Absolutely. Of course, not only the theme park, it's a very important thing, but you also have uh, more than 2,700 ex exhibitors. You can, you can check everything, but the theme park will be one of the highlights again. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Olaf, is there something from your side to add at the end? 
uh, to make a conclusion as well? Yes, of course. I think it's a very interesting discussion when I listen to, to you and uh, I would like to uh, stress again our thanks from the Huntex team for the wonderful work and for the insights today. Uh, a lot of information. Uh, we know you met each other in March this year to talk about uh, trend developments. We decide together that we change the concept from a normal trend presentation to a theme park presentation. And I think this was the right decision because uh, this is in direction state of the art, I would say state of the art, and will also support our position as Heim Textile as the world leading fair, largest fair, but leading fair also from the size, but also from the quality for home and contract textiles. We are very excited about the presentation in January. Uh, Timo mentioned already 12th of January. This is a Tuesday and uh, I would also like to return it again. Tuesday, the first time that we change from Wednesday to a Tuesday, from Tuesday to Friday, that's new at Heim Textile. Only one part new, a lot of new things. Uh, and uh, we are very excited to see the theme park. Thanks a lot for your work. And uh, we learned a lot about uh, the trend and the theme park already. Great, thank you very much. So um, I would say the presentation the talk is closed now, but we come to the questions and answers part. I already have some questions from some journalists. So um, the first question, I will not mention your name. I will only mention the, the media. So the first question is from um, Textile Journal. Um, if you would, if you can talk, say something more about the concept of the sun. So how do you, how do you mean? Uh, let me see, I need to translate it, sorry. Um, how do you uh, mean the, the circle of a sun and the relation with textiles? Is there, how can you, ex can you explain it a little bit more deeper? Or maybe um, this journalist just need to visit Heim Textile yeah, to foresee I, I it, I don't I, know. I think the answer is really <laughs> simple. You need to come and visit us at Heim Textile <laughs> and you'll have easy. all your questions answered. Um, I think it's about, you know, taking the visitor on a journey, taking them letting them sort of come into this world of textiles and having them experience it in a completely new and different way. Um, this season, as we're, it's very clear, it's all about well-being. So really it's about how to take your visitor who's so used to seeing textile trade shows and taking them into this new environment where they're experiencing the same materials, if you like, but in a new environment in a more exciting way. So the sun for us is really the heart, the center, the core of the concept. The concept of if you've got the core, the sun, the heart, this is everything that needs to operate, operates around this idea. So the color palettes will be there, the key trends will be there, and from there will radiate all the different sectors. And within the textile journey and within the cocoons, it's all connected within our story of well-being, but at the same time, connecting the entire trade show with all its, um, thousands of visitors and all their fabrics that are being displayed throughout the trend area that we're creating. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question is from, um, where is it? Oh, sorry. Mm, I don't see the media now, but um, it's, it's, I think it's for Anime more or less, Anne-Marie. Um, Last year, the trend, the theme park was the experience. Are there any are there any conclusions from the experience which will, will or which are brought into the next year's theme park, or is it like complete a completely new theme park concept? Yeah, so if you if you have experienced the experience this year at theme park, um, will it be kind of same or really really new? It's not up to us. <laughs> it's up to the We don't design the theme park this year. But I cannot imagine that it won't be about experience. I think <laughs> it will be, because it is not. It was not the topic of one season. Yeah. It's where the world is going. It's uh, th 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 so there is a lot of links with what was shown in the theme park of this year, which will move into next year, and which will move into the <laughs> year after. But the good thing is now we have this circular system, yeah. <laughs> also circular, the um, that there's now another agency, and they will really handle this tr topic, which is still there in a totally different way. This is what Felix mentioned, it's continuous. Yeah, it's continuous. Exactly, yeah. I think it's the evolution also of, of last year, because we, in the Wellbeing 4.0, we want the visitor to experience this well-being. So experience is still there, of course. They will experience uh, the different aspects and combinations of well-being. So they will be able to experience 
um, a more soft and calm uh, atmosphere and more energetic atmosphere. Last year you were, you had also a lot of technology in in some in an area of your theme park. So there are definitely some links between last year and and our theme park this year. Okay, so now I think yeah, it's the last question. It's from the Interior Design Magazine. Um, as an interior designer, um, how should it be, or how can you um, deep dive into the trends in an easy way to bring it to the clients, to the interior designer clients? Is there kind of a, of a, yeah, as I said, guided tour, or is it just go in and be open-minded? How would you say? How, how, how would the, the best tour for a guy for interior designer at the theme park? Um, I think it's really important to capture the feeling of what the story that we're trying to tell and the reason why so much energy and effort's gone into storytelling each season is because it's it's about what's new about each season is the way you experience the trend the way you experience the fabric the way you feel the fabric and in turn it's going to be the new way that your consumers feel experience buy and use the fabric as well so as an interior designer i think the book is really key i think the book really helps make concrete the ideas that we're talking about sure we can talk about architecture and um, plants and sustainability but at the end of the day it's important to say what does that mean in, in, in material design and fabric design the book really highlights some of the key words the key fabrics the key colors that colors, are really yeah. important for the season so definitely look to the book as well and then when you have the book um, take it to the show walk through the show you get to see sort of in our eyes how we see the different cocoons and what the fabrics mean to each of the seasons and um, each of the, the themes. There will also be um, the guided tool which works as a headset so there will be um, a narration through the five cocoons so that's that will also um, add to the knowledge and the in-depth um, sort of exploration of the areas that we'll be showing. So again the message would be to oversee the theme park and all the trends you need to come. You, <laughs> you need really, to join. <laughs> really need to come. Yeah. No choice, right. Okay, um, this was the last question, so I would close the um, question and answer session now. Thank you very much again. Um, the whole video of this live streaming will be shown online later on the Heim Textile website and the Heim Textile theme park um, website. So, um, of course, um, everybody who missed it can see it then. If there will be any questions after, um, I'm pretty sure we're able to forward them to you guys and just to make sure that they will be answered properly. Or, of course, we will meet each other in January in Hantexil. Again, a Tuesday, the 12th, not on a Wednesday. So, again, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Um, see you soon and all the best. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.